Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Inside Fashion Design Community Conversations. Today, we're very excited to have Becky Jarvis with us, who's done some amazing work. And um, not to put Becky on the spot, but I am going to read what I found um, on your LinkedIn, which just impressed me more. And I'll paraphrase, I won't do it okay. exactly, but some of the things that were written about in here, I just felt were so impressive that I just wanted to share some of the, the facts that you have. And you can correct me if some of these are um, not current, but I think they're still pretty um, relevant. And so it says twice annually, nearly 10,000 women in the Portland metro area visit curvy chic closet consignment sales events. Um, it's for shopping plus size fashions. And you say women deserve choices. And plus size women represent 65% of the clothing market, yet major retailers routinely overlook this majority. And yeah, most of the inventory is not in those sizes. Women of every shape deserve to feel beautiful and your consignment events give customers a variety of options that they deserve. And you're very much an advocate on self-confidence and body positivity and all that, which I think is just a wonderful thing to have as part of your business strategy. Um, so you host the pop-up consignment shop two times a year. Correct. Yes. As well as a fashion show. Yes. We have the largest plus size fashion show on the West coast. Yeah. As well as a foundation and doing community support. So you're juggling a lot. You wear many hats and it's, uh, I know that you're very busy. So to start off, how about you tell us a little bit about your background? Like, how did you even get to start Curvy Chic and why? And Absolutely. how that, yeah, we'd love so to hear. In 2011, I used to volunteer as a mom to a local kids consignment pop-up event, pass it on. And I decided, you know, it was one of those light bulb moments of why isn't there one for plus size individuals and I researched at that time there was one in Kansas City and I've remained friends with the person um she has long since left the industry um and just you know as moms we shop for our kids but don't typically shop for ourselves and that's pretty much how it got started when I started my research and you know we were in a small 2,000 square foot church when we started and now um, typically we like to be in a 20,000 to 30,000 square foot building for our event because we have anywhere from 150 to 200 shoppers with 20,000 consigned items, shoes, jewelry, and purses. Wow. That's, <laughs> that's massive. I know planning events is not an easy task. Um, so it's really impressive that the, the progress you've made over the years and how it's grown, um, so you also have, I'm just looking through your, your foundation, you have the foundation, you have the pop-up shop, you have a really nice mission and values that you strive for. So would you mind sharing, like, what is your mission with the whole Curvy Chic and Curvy Chic uh, Closet foundation. foundation? So the mission with Curvy Chic Closet is to provide a body positive, friendly event um, for women, and I shouldn't just say women, because we get women, teens, transgendered to come find clothing sizes 14, extra large and up. We're, our dressing rooms are five by five. And inside each dressing room, we have body positive sayings. We want to be welcoming. We want it to be a fun place for plus size individuals to get clothing. And also, we don't have any diet talk. We don't have any when we have vendors. We don't have any... Um, I say health under the quote that sometimes some health businesses are under the guise of you need to lose weight to look better and feel better about yourself. Right. right. Our individuals and, don't want to find hear that. They're there. Yeah, you don't closing. Yeah. You don't want to go shopping, trying to find something that you feel good in. And then the message is, oh, you know, you should lose weight. Here's the before and after. Yeah. And I made the mistake when I was first starting out where I had at least three vendors that were, quote, weight, health and wellness, but they were more about losing weight. And that's an individual choice. I am not against it, but that doesn't need to be thrown in your face, you know? Yeah. 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 So that was pretty much the mission with the Curvy Sheet Closet. 
consignment, we try to make sure we get sellers that have clothing of all sizes, ranges. And yes, we do have um, usually women from the that have had weight loss surgery. Um, they're downsizing in their clothing. They're not at their target weight. So yes, they will have a lot of what we call extended range clothing sizes 24 and up. And they'll come shop because they're still not at their target weight. And mm -hmm. so they're making money mm -hmm. by selling the clothes that don't fit them. That yeah. makes sense. Your show, I am I know you from your fashion show, but the show and events itself have so much focus on the consignment part. And I didn't know you started out that way. It was a pop-up shop at first. And so how many vendors do you have now? Um, for this upcoming show, unfortunately zero because we are in a smaller than normal space and it was the mm. only space I could find. So it was either not have a fashion show, not have a consignment event, or have it, but having to make some sacrifices such as not being able to have vendors. This is the first time since I 2011 see. that I've not had vendors mm -hmm. and be sold out of tickets um, two, was it two days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing uh, that. Less, less seats. We're hoping we can have more seats once we get into the building and do our measurements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. when you say uh, when you say no vendors, so what products do you still have? Uh, an inventory of clothing that will be there or I don't carry in any inventory it's all consignment based okay. um, so our consigners are the ones that bring inventory um, when we had vendors we had locally uh, based typically women-owned vendors candle makers soap makers um, jewelry makers um, Sensi uh, Origami Al were usually on the perimeter of the event Okay. Yeah. I know, um, trying to find a venue to hold these kind of events is so difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I know that's one of your big challenges that you face. How do you, yeah. How do you even go about, um, just asking and inquiring and it's just, uh, it's on my radar, even throughout the year in between the events, I can tell you which buildings are going out of business, which buildings have been sitting empty for there are some landlords that have no interest in they'd rather have their buildings at empty for four or five years well there's other um landlords that love having us um we were at a bales thriftway was it two years ago for about a year and a half before they renovated and sold it to basic uh, market and our my event brought business to the other um, retailers in that business park, the little independent coffee shop. Um, Mike's Auto Parts got the men coming in while the women were shopping. And so we do pump the economy. My um, sellers, they're also, they're also earning money for their households. Right. You would think that businesses would want most of them would want that. It makes me think of, we have so many empty retail spaces in my neighborhood. We've got, it used to be an Albertsons mm -hmm. and then there was Orchards, the hardware store. Yeah, and I was in an old Albertsons last fall. Yeah, it's such a huge open space and it's just been sitting empty for five years. And, you know, occasionally yeah. they'll put those Halloween the yeah, Halloween <laughs> and I mean, for our event, a lot of our women come from out of state, not out of state, out of town, you know, they get together with girlfriends, they go out for lunch after they're done shopping, or they go out for dinner after they're done shopping. So it is helping the economy. Yeah. So do you find you get a lot of visitors from out of state? Um, yeah, we do get people from Seattle, Tacoma. We've had people from Idaho, Northern California. We get people from Eugene, Albany, Salem, Oregon Coast, um, Central Oregon that do come to the event. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons is, is because it's hard to find plus size clothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can order online, but if you order online and you get excited when it comes and then you try it on and it doesn't fit where mine you can try on other brands that you may have not thought about looking mm -hmm. at yeah that's, great. that's awesome you have such a big reach so do you have plans of like expanding or are you trying to um keep it um, local right now it'd be hard for me to take it to other places um just because then even though it's only four days the week before we're setting up um, even though we have a trailer, I, I regret not buying a bigger trailer. I have a 20 foot trailer, but then I have a bigger <laughs> truck. 
to pull it. Um, and then we make at least between myself, my husband and my manager, 20 individual trips to wherever our venue is each season. Oh that's before gosh. the event starts because that wow. stuff that doesn't fit in the trailer. Wow. And that so, is- I mean, I would love to work with someone who has an interest in doing a similar thing somewhere else in the country as a consultant. Yeah, maybe a partnership of some kind and yeah. do an mm-hmm. East Coast event. And, well, I've, and I've had a lot of people inquire, but once they find out it's not, you have to have equipment, you have to have racks, mm-hmm. you have to have, there's a lot of investment to even starting this that people don't think about tables for accessories. And yeah, absolutely. So how big is your team right now? Um, I have a manager, my manager, Amy, who helps me with the consignment part of it. And then on the fashion show side, I have a fashion producer, Cindy. I have a a Mm. production manager, Ramona. And then I have two production assistants. I have, we have two interns right now. And then I have a head, um, Jim White, who's our photography coordinator, who supervises two to three photographers. And I have a designer liaisons, Ivy Lumpkin, and I have a model liaisons, Carolyn. Carolyn. Um, and so, yeah, it's still small compared to the size of other fashion show production teams. Yeah, well, you're also doing like a different style of show almost. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk to us about the fashion show and give us like an overview oh, of how you... And you do two a year, right? Two a year, usually late September, late April. We typically have anywhere from six to nine designers. I'm proud to announce that most of our designers are BIPOC um, Mm -hmm. that participate in our event. Um, The models are ages anywhere typically from 14 to 70. 25% of our models are considered silver fox, meaning they're ages 50 and above. Mm -hmm. We have had... um, hearing impaired, visually impaired models. We've had a teen model in a wheelchair. We've had a model with prosthetic uh, leg. Um, We basically were very body positive. The only requirement is they have to be 14 and up, size 14. Mm -hmm. I did see on your social media platform that you also do a, a boot camp. Well, yeah. you have a you have a model call and you have a boot camp. Is that the same thing? Or do you do a separate like boot camp to to teach models? Um, actually, it's if they become a curvy sheet closet model um, for new models are required to go to our boot camp um, to prepare them. And then they also get assigned a model mentor oh, um, nice. to help them. And, you know, they're free to ask us questions, but also their model mentor to make sure that they have a good experience with being in That's a fashion show. So nice. Because there's so many nuances about being in a fashion show that a new model might not understand and might be embarrassed to ask, or, you know, what do you keep in a model kit? Um, I'm not understanding. Mm-hmm. How do I practice my, mo- uh, my model walk before the show? And then also the model coordinator makes sure that they're making their fitting appointments. Mm-hmm. And then so, I'm the- you- Go ahead. Yeah, as I say, you're not traditionally from the fashion industry. So when you started planning a fashion show and thinking about models, did you bring in a, like a, tr- a trained model professional to help you get going? Or did you just kind of learn it along the way? I learned it along the way years ago, and I had no experience in the fashion industry. My first fashion show was because we as a team said, oh, it's really quiet on Friday nights. Let's do a fashion show. I had one designer I told her basically, we'll provide the music, you provide the models, the hair, the makeup. And I did not know that that's not how fashion shows are run. And well, you the, figured it out. <laughs> um, I did. Um, at the time, my consignment team, we went and volunteered with Portland Fashion Week at backstage and learned skills and tips. And that's basically how I met my fashion show producer, as well as Ivy Lumpkin, who is our designer Leia Sanson is also one of our designers for our show. So for the fashion show itself, is it um, new designer, not new designers, but it's their actual collections and not part of the consignment? Or do you- well, okay. it's a little of both. Um, our fashion show designers um, design outfits for the show. Um, 
in some of the past years, we have had one to two national retailers. We have had Columbia Sportswear. We've worked with Kroger as well as Maurice's. Um, we've had Lane Bryant. Um, and so we've had the major focus is on the independent designers, but we have had some national retailers as well. That's nice to have that combination. Yes. With the size of your show. And it, then we also do Curry Sheet Closet Fashions as one lineup on the runway um, where they pick their own clothing. <coughs> Excuse me. From the, from the consignment. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Clothing options. Okay. Yeah. How, uh, if someone was interested in modeling, mm -hmm. what do they need to do or what dates do you have coming up for kind of so the. Typically, we cast in mid January for our spring show and then mid June typically for our fall show. And it is an in person casting call. Okay. And what do they need to do to prepare? Can they, they sign up online or just show up? And <clears throat> they just show up. And we ask them to wear um, a light color t-shirt with form-fitting pants and bring their heels. And that's pretty much it. And, you know, we're pretty forgiving in the casting room. They get their measurements taken before they come to the casting room. You know, if we see that they're nervous, we'll tell them to shake it off and try it again when they do a walk that we ask them to do. Yeah, because they don't need experience, right? They Correct. We are very forgiving and just say smile and, you know, shake the shoulders and try it again. Have fun. Yeah. Well, it was fun for me to read again on your social media platform, some of the testimonials uh -huh. on there about some of the models and how they never thought they could model or, you know, they, their friends encouraged them, but they were very nervous and they didn't show up the first time, but then they decided to try it. And then they end up having just a wonderful experience. And it sounds like a lot of uh, the positivity comes from the community and the models and the support that you're providing for everyone. It does, else. because there's a lot of friendships, whether it's on the consignment side or the model side, because some of the models do consign, um, that they get to see their friends every six months, um, just because some of them live out of town. Some of my models do live out of town um, in Washington that participate. And so those new friendships is really inspiring. And one of my friends called it, it's like coming to summer camp and seeing all your friends again. Oh, yeah, that's so nice. I was going to say, from mm -hmm. being like seeing your show, the lifeblood of the whole show is seeing like just how much fun everyone is having, like all the models and everyone in the audience, everyone is just like brimming with joy to be there. And you can really feel that and then see that in the models and on their faces when they're walking and even yeah the one thing you, um you might um I get to see since I sit towards the end of the runway is most of our models will walk two to three times in the fashion mm -hmm. show and the first time with some of the new models I can see as they're walking down they're nervous but when they get to the end of the runway they're beaming with a big smile because they did that first ever in front of public walks and then their second and third walks are usually a little bit more confident. They're like loosened up. But like, yes. Yes. Yeah. And I forgot to mention, we also do have plus size men that participate in the fashion show mm -hmm. as well. And we do have, I know this upcoming show, we do have at least two transgendered individuals that are participating in the fashion show. That's so wonderful to hear. If they become a model like you select them how does the process with um if you know because maybe they're out of town and the fittings and working with a designer or the stylist to pick the outfits is there do they have to come back into town to they will typically if they're working with designers if say they have two designers they'll have the designers will put we have individual designer pages group private pages will post dates of when they're doing fittings and then they'll have to make arrangements to come and do their fittings then. The clothing from consignment is done the day of the show. They pick out and they work with my production team to make sure that we don't have 10 models wearing formal wear per se. Or Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm balancing it out. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, don't, I hope this is okay to ask, do the models get paid or is it a volunteer? They get a small stipend. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm continuing every season to try and increase that stipend. That comes through sponsorships. That comes through grants. Um, it's it, hard. 
Yeah, on average fashion show, when I did a lot of numbers last year, I didn't realize it was almost $4,500 to produce. And I'm underwriting the cost of the space cost for the fashion show through just me as an individual. Um, once you start, you know, office supplies, meals, you know, we provide lunch for the ones, my production team that and models that are there early to pick out outfits, then we provide dinner. Um, it's all a cost. Yes. Um, fashion show postcards, um, you know, the merchant fees from the ticket sales, it all adds up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's yeah, it's never ending with the, and you know, little things, lights, yeah. well, that's a big thing, but lights and speakers and music and my sound DJ, my, you mm -hmm. know, if you're bringing that. in hair and makeup people. Mm -hmm. So most of my team um, do get a small stipend. Yeah, I did notice, um, I think it was on your website or somewhere on your posts that you um, occasionally are looking for team members. Is it if someone is interested in volunteering or joining in in some manner, how can they get involved? Um, they just need to either contact me via Facebook or info at Curvy Sheet Closet. Um, about two years, two and a half, no, three years ago, we started an internship program because I couldn't find interns through the local school to work program. And I thought, well, let's just start our own. I mean, I have one teen who started at 13 and nowadays most teens don't talk on the phone that was one of the things that this teen had to learn how to do they had to learn to call my models and say hey you haven't seen a post hey yeah, they can't I, just post it on social and expect them to find it yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. so this teen i'm particularly proud of is working at a local rest fast food restaurant and now just got her their first job about a six months ago and now as a manager at this local this teen it started as a model as well as an intern as now a designer with our show oh wow and this teen is going places has another year of schooling it'll be sad to lose the teen but you know that's the type of leadership experience this teen has had to learn how to mo to manage at times models that are 30 40 years old 50 years old yeah, what a great experience. And Even we, being a, a, a dresser in the back, you know, is just a way to get started. And, and you just take in all of the action that's going on around you. And you can't replace that actual experience of being there in person. Yeah, now these teens will have experience to put on a resume, experience mm. to put on a scholarship application for college. I have a sound intern that works for my sound tech. I just brought on a new teen who's 14, 15, I think she's 15. And, you know, she's not going to be doing the same thing that my other intern did. I'm going to slowly, she's going to help check in models at day of show at dress rehearsal. She helped check in models at the boot camp. We slowly integrate. I may give her some research to find me research chair um, companies that um, rent chairs, even though I know where I'm going to rent from, just so that she can yeah. get that experience. Yeah. How do you manage all of that? A lot of Excel <laughs> spreadsheets. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any tips and advice for if you're interested in this kind of business or perhaps some of the, some of the tasks that you have to have some skill or experience at? Um, to... My best tips is um, I love Canva. I'm constantly using Canva for social media ads, and especially now that they've added some new features. Um, I use Excel quite a bit. Um, because my fashion show spreadsheet, one page will have the designers and contact information and line up. The second page will have all the models with their measurements. And then some of the remaining sheets will have um, the individual designers and the models with their measurements. And then I have a VIP chart. I have a day of show <laughs> volunteer spread uh, in within the spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> It's <laughs> have model phone numbers. I pretty much have everything in that one master spreadsheet. Yeah. So is this That's pretty fun. much your full-time gig? Um, pretty much. I mean, between the consignment right now, I'm I am dealing with people who are registering, um, people with questions once they register to consign. I'm also juggling volunteers that volunteer with the consignment piece of it. Yeah. Wow. Have you thought about doing 
uh, an actual retail location, like year round curvy? Yeah, street? I probably, I'm actually not really interested in that because I know that people who have it, you know, you have to have employees and yeah. it's a lot of work and can be quite expensive from what I've heard. Yeah, I was just yeah. curious about that. So if um, somebody wants to consign clothing that they have, what is your process? How do they go about? Um, they just need to go to our website at www.curvysheetcloset.com or they can, you know, message, message or me or email me if they have questions. It's a pretty easy process. Once you register, you get a seller number and then you just input your items online and then you print barcode tags. That's part of the consignment software piece okay. and then you attach them to the clothing, whether it's clothing, shoes, purse, jewelry, and then you bring it in the week bef the week of the sale for inspection. This is so much that you're involved in. Like you're doing a show twice a year, you're managing this team, managing interns. So do you, is this your full-time job? This is what you do all year round? <laughs> It's pretty much full time. Plus, my husband and I run a computer repair company, and I'm his admin. Oh, schedule nice. appointments and that sort of stuff. And then with the foundation, um, under the foundation comes our year enough workshops. We also do um, scholarships to body positive events. Mm -hmm. And this year, wow. I'm excited because I finally found um, someone to handle um, our development. And so that person, her name's Louise Taylor, she's taking on a role of helping me. So I'm not having to, like last year, I was having to get donations for our February fundraiser. And that right. was a lot of work because then I was picking them up and then had to take pictures of them. And Oh, the, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And then she's also in charge of finding items for um, the raffles we do at the fashion shows as, as a right. way of raising money. And I you also, had a ton of raffle baskets. You had like yes. 15 raffle baskets. Yes. I was like, damn. That's yes. Fun. But now yeah. she's uh, taking on a much bigger role on that because I'll find, mm -hmm. oh, contact the spa and see if they'll donate a spa gift certificate instead of me having to do that. And so I'm happy to have someone on board this year as our fundraiser coordinator. I mean, I'm still looking for that. Um, Grant Ferry. <laughs> if you if My you figure grand. out how to do that, let me know. <laughs> yeah. You need yeah. a twin. Wow, yeah. that's so much work. It so is. So what's a normal day for you like? Um, well, this morning I went to um to a business networking all about um business in Washington County. Um I have a couple of chiropractic appointments because I was in a car accident oh. a few months ago. I'm okay, but I was, we were rear-ended during the snow and ice. Oh. Um, I will, I'm dealing with the leasing office because of signage. They're very picky about what they'll allow and not allow. Um, trying to think, I'm working with my volunteers who are going to help unload the trailer. <laughs> So it's just a lot of odd things. I try to do all my social media in the morning and hit all the posts and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I would love to d do more TikTok, but I'm not there yet. So oh uh, yeah, it's so hard to know what to do with so many options, and you kind of hear, I hear, you know, you hear good and bad. It's like TikTok's the thing, and then oh, it's gonna fizzle out, so don't bother. <laughs> so yeah, it's such a big challenge and time consuming. So it's yeah, yeah. but it doesn't it's, sound like. Becky, it's so I don't know about you guys, but after being stuck in our house for like two years, I've become like very much more a homebody, a lot less like energy to be like doing all the shows and every single thing. Like, I'm just like, wow, I don't know how I was the person I was in 2018. But it doesn't sound like Becky, it doesn't sound like you've slowed down at all. You're, you're just like going <laughs> for it. Nothing has stopped her. Before the pandemic, I've worked at home for 20 some years. So it wasn't really that much of a change. Um, and the only major change was we did not the, f the first year when the pandemic hit our spring, we, everything obviously was canceled. But then we did do two virtual shows and I had, I thought it would be a lot easier and it was a lot more work because one of the virtual shows, we had to do nine different filmings outside. 
Uh-huh. And, you know, I thought, okay, we can do this in three hours. It ended up being a whole day thing with the photographers and the models. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah. it felt like nine individual fashion shows. Yeah. And the Virtual first- events are not not easy. Yeah. And then we had to have someone pull it all together. And then the virtual selling of the virtual tickets and making sure that the virtual didn't, it was just, it was a lot of work. And I think one of our last designers, we had a location at a park and then they closed the park up to the public. That, oh. that was the week that we had the fires um, all over the Northwest oh, where yeah. the air quality was really poor. You couldn't even go outside. Yeah. And so we found yeah. a church, but the church that we were using had um, taped squares on the floor because apparently when they use that room, that's where people would put their little chair and be in their little space. <laughs> space space and out. I, <laughs> yeah. And I hated that one last filming because you could see the blue tape on the floor for aesthetics oh. it oh. just didn't have the lovely look of being up on one of the one of the hills in Washington County or being at McMenamin's out on Cornelius Pass in their lovely mm-hmm. garden area it, but there was nothing I could do it yeah. was what it, you know make it made it work yes could you tell me a little bit more about the actual foundation how did you go from the Yes. Consignment event to, I assume the consignment event came first and then you decided to make a nonprofit foundation. Right. And the fashion shows had been in existence for a few years after then I decided to create a nonprofit. And when we created the fashion show, it was just, it started out as, oh, let's bring more people in. And then over the years, it was the stories that I was told. um, One of the models that came in to our casting call late 40s 50s had been sexually assaulted and had told me that she hadn't been out of her house for three months it was the Mm. stories of a mom telling me of a model from from out in the country that her daughter had been suicidal and been bullied in school because of her height her weight so four and a half years because we're going on yeah it'll be almost five years um in September it was those stories after the fashion show that people came and told me these stories so it was more than just the designers the fashion the models it was how the fashion show changed people and so then I wrote the paperwork to become a 501c3 and while the fashion show is one of our largest pieces of the programming we then started the Year Enough workshops uh, pre-COVID for adults and teens. And then we added Phenomenally Enough, which is the body positive scholarships to attend body positive events. And we're last year, we did have one Year Enough workshop, which was a, um, we brought in a facilitator and they were able to decorate these mirrors with body positive sayings and their artwork so that they could hang this mirror someplace where they could see it and see that they're enough. Um, That's you know, so having someone, this was after I became a nonprofit, having someone who was a cutter and come up to me and asked me to take a picture of their hand with the temporary tattoo that we had donated that says you're enough was huge for that individual to say, Hey, I w- would like this picture taken so you can post it on social media. Um, so that's basically how things came evolve because also being a nonprofit gave, gave me access also to be able to apply for a lot of different grants to keep my vision going. Yeah. Have you been able to get some grants? Oh, yes. Yes. We've been, um, we have um, three grants for spring that are art related grants. And in the past, we've been able to get um, grants for our year enough workshop, as long as it's art has some kind of component of art in it. Okay. Yeah. Um, how often do you do the You Are Enough? And I think there's one coming up maybe in May. Yes, May 13th. We're, and it's open to plus size adults and teens. Um, it will be limited to 15 to 16 participants. We have found that photography helps an individual because they may see themselves in a different light. It doesn't change the person, but being able to get pictures of yourself and where you can feel good about yourself 
And so um, typically our, our year enough, we provide a morning refreshment and then um, they'll, we'll have a few volunteers, um, hair and makeup that will um, update if they need updating with their makeup and their hair. Um, we're doing it at the Tigard Grange. And so we don't have the same facility that we have used in the past. And then we have three photographers from the community that are donating their time to take pictures. And then we have lunch. We are looking for a lunch sponsor right now. And then we'll have some workshops in the afternoon. Oh, and they'll also get to, while they're waiting for photography sessions, they'll get to paint some rocks with body positive sayings on them. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's not, when so it's is, a, one, a full one day. Yes. Yeah, when is it? May 13th. Um, okay. check, um, they need to register in advance and we'll be at the Tigard Grange on Highway 99. Yeah. And you still have space? Awesome. You have openings? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What does the afternoon workshops include? Um, we'll have, we'll do a couple of icebreakers. We'll do, um, we have a keynote speaker and then we'll have a panel. We're still working on that. That's awesome. I actually know someone who might want to talk on your panel. Yeah. I'll message you about that afterwards. Yeah, send me some information. Um, I'll put that on my to-do list, but this is, this is awesome, Becky. So this is so many events. So what are you looking for in the panel? Like what kind of people are you looking for? Um, we're looking for individuals that are body positive and have come to the realm that it's okay to be whatever size you are. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, You're getting such nice. a big response from the community. Yeah, from and yeah. I, you know, I'm excited this year because we're getting more people that are sponsoring and donating that helps keep my vision alive. We're still a small nonprofit, but it, it is a constant fundraising. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So are you looking for, or what kind of sponsors are you still in need of? Right now I'm looking for someone to sponsor our lunch for um, You Are Enough workshop either through a financial donation of 50 to 60 dollars or if someone's a caterer that could provide um lunch for 25 people because that includes my participants and my volunteers um we are blessed to have a um meal sponsor for our fashion show mundo catering has supported us over the years and I don't want models passing out because they haven't eaten. So, yeah. <laughs> and people don't realize that models are there usually typically the entire day. Yeah. Know? To keep your energy energy up. And I've seen, I've been at a show where I've seen models faint because they were working, you know, since 8 a.m. getting all their hair and makeup done. And then it's mm -hmm. six o'clock and they haven't had a moment to eat. So yeah, the P and W weddings um that has a digital uh, magazine is a, one of our sponsors to help with our model stipends this time. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well I'm excited so, about all these amazing things that you're doing and um yeah looking I'm forward excited. to yeah go I'm ahead. I'm excited to come to this uh interview with you later this month. Um I'm just wondering like are there any designers at this upcoming show that you're really excited about like do you well, have I'm any excited fun? about all of them but we do have um two new designers geneva rose based in hillsboro who is a potter but now is doing upcycle clothing okay and then we have eutheri kemmer who um was originally from this area and then moved out of this area and now is back and is based in Hillsboro. And oh I know God. that Eutheri Kemmer's design has showcased years ago at Portland Fashion Week and some other big fashion shows as well. Yeah, is there any other designers you have confirmed? Um, we have Chocolate Diamond, Ivy Lumpkin, who's based in Vancouver. We have Dakima Maria, who's based in, I believe, Vancouver. Let me think. Um, we have Style Fora, which is a 17 year old high school student wow. who designs um, shoes, hand paints on the shoes. Let me think. Cool. I want to make sure I'm not missing any. Yeah. Well, um, and yeah, so Sloan, you're going to be um, further interviewing Becky. And... Yeah, we're going to, I want to talk about like, and we have Charity. Kind of a, 
Charity Rosalind, oh. who's from the Seattle Tacoma area, Polynesian okay. inspired wear. Oh, I really liked her collection lot at the last show. All that like, was it the pink flowery stuff? Um, that and was the Ima Maria. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love that kind of design. You know what I mean? They really incorporate like so much emphasis on the fabric and I love that. Yeah. Well, the reason I'm so interested in interviewing you this season is because you're tra you're in a transitionary period of what you're doing. And so you're in this new space. So I kind of wanted to um, go over like, you know, what direction you're taking this and I'll be asking you more in depth and like uh, looking at the space and hearing more of the story. But if you want to give us like um, the rundown of what's going on this year for you, like in, in terms of what's changing and what's new. I think what's changing is we, we've we really expanded in the last year um, because it used to just be a, a handful of us. And as expansion comes in, having, we've always, we've had an organizational chart for the last three years, I think. But this last year, we've had to actually formally write job descriptions um getting very formalized yes it is um we're having more team meetings we always have a debriefing after each event i have a debriefing with my manager for consignment piece and then i have a debriefing with the fashion show production team a zoom meeting afterwards while things are still fresh in our minds mm -hmm. and in the last year we've brought on a um model liaisons and a designer liaisons to oversee more things for us I love that you do the debrief because I'm sure there's things there's always happen. things to improve on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, you know, you can have like emergency things that happen or things just fall through or something's forgotten. And so that you debrief and revisit is such a great, you know. Yeah. And so then I create that document so I can review it for the upcoming one. Yeah. Also sharing critiques with your teammates in the professional setting is a lot easier. The sooner you do it to the event of when something happened that you need to fix instead of down the line when then you're like, oh, were you holding this in all, the whole time? It's like easier to just say it like when it's going on. It That's is. A great idea. Just sometimes there's new ideas. You know, last time we didn't have Ooh. someone in charge of our food coordination and realizing we needed to have a volunteer because some models didn't know there was food you know yeah <laughs> and so just Absolutely. like those little those little pieces and you know going from one intern to now three interns you know and trying yeah, to you're growing so that they can develop themselves as well absolutely so um what are some of the I mean, I know this is kind of a softball question, but like, what, what is, what's something that you want each person viewing your show when they leave the show, what do you want them to feel? Or what do you want them to take away from every single event that you do? Okay. So are you talking on the seller side, consignment or the fashion mm, show side? The viewers uh, or whoever's at the consignment show, like okay. what, well, what are you trying to inspire in people? Um, in terms of the consignment um, show last season, I had two or three new volunteers and they just had a ball. They enjoyed making the friendships. I mean, yes, they're helping hang the clothes, but the fact that they came to me and said, I can't wait to do this next year. I had another woman, older woman retired who said, do you need volunteers for the foundation? I would love to help out. So I think it's those pieces, not just about finding clothes and feeling good, but just the community, I would say. And I would say the same thing on the fashion show industry side of it is the community. We all went out after the boot camp to Red Robin for for dinner. The models will one of the models will coordinate a dinner after the fashion show, and they'll probably be Red Robin because walking mm -hmm. distance as a tradition as a tradition after the fashion show. Mm -hmm. And then last summer we were able to do a summer picnic. So it was the second year in a row where we've done a summer picnic. I would love to do more of those with the CCC community. Yeah, it's great to hear that because it's this definitely isn't a typical fashion show where it's the models are hired, they go in, they do their job, and then they're on to the next job. This building of a community is yeah, such and a I've wonderful... heard not Sloan's Sloan's fashion show, but other fashion shows where the models are very they don't want to share their their mirror they don't want to share anything they are to themselves 
you know, where my models, if someone didn't bring something there, they will like my model, Carolyn, who brings, has a suitcase that has literally everything in it. They'll say, oh, you need a safety pin here. Let me give you a safety pin from my model bag. Yeah. It's so wonderful. Because there used to be a time in Portland where a lot of the models were like, well, I'm the top plus model. You're not yeah. one of us. We've yeah, you're not that mold. You're not at my you level. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sloan is also so experienced in doing these non-traditional fashion shows. And it's really fun to see the variety that people are coming up with. And especially ones like yourself, that you're not an industry trained person. You just had this amazing idea and you saw a need and you're building the sense of community, which is just wonderful to, to learn about and, and hear. And do you have any, um, words of advice for someone that may be interested in starting this kind of business or host producing a fashion show or a nonprofit? Event? Yeah, I was going to say, what advice would you, do you wish someone would have given you when you were starting? Yeah, that's a great yeah. way to ask. Um, I would think, I would say that it's going to be, it's going to be a crazy ride and yes, there's going to be <laughs> issues i mean i've had a stalker over the years um a stalker yes oh my <laughs> and it all came from sharing something on portland fashion week they were they were helping with a nonprofit that um works with autism and portland fashion week was helping sponsor that and i thought oh great i'll share it on my social media and then this person called the nonprofit and asked if they'd heard of me and they obviously said no. And then she started posting on my social media that I was scamming this nonprofit. Oh boy. Oh. And over the years she's posted, I unfortunately in the last few months had to hire an attorney to get a cease and desist because she was posting on my social media that our foundation was a scam, which it's not. So yeah, I don't that's understand just why. one of the struggles. Yeah. Yeah. You might want to prepare yourself for it. And having to learn how to deal with people of all sorts of people, the people handling, you know, people of different abilities, people, it's just, it's, it's always a growth experience for me because I didn't go to, I took a couple years of college, but I didn't get a degree in business management. I didn't get a degree in this or that. It's all been learn on the job as I've grown. Yeah. And you haven't so given that, up you know, realizing I had an organizational chart for three years ago, but we didn't have job descriptions. <laughs> yeah. Just filling in as you go. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a testament to the um, possibility of, of creating something out of nothing and being successful at it. And I think just what I've learned too, over the years of just while well, working in the industry and then being an entrepreneur is there's so many setbacks Oh yes, yeah. what you're doing, and there's many. Guess, yeah, that that's a good point because people think, oh, I do this, do this, do this. Well, the first regional art grant, which I applied for three years ago, I applied three or four, I think it was the fourth time that I got the grant, and everyone said that if you get a regional arts grant, that's one of the back then was one of the toughest art grants mm. to get because it's eight nine pages. Then a you have to attach a budget, and you have to attach media stuff and you have to attach all this well every time you do that grant it's a different committee it oh, may be yeah. someone sitting on the committee that doesn't understand your vision and so you had a lot of no's before you got that i've had a lot of yeah. no's not even just with grants um yeah. just even trying to find a building and you know this last time there's been times where i've almost not last season i almost didn't have a building you know sitting down and crying and said okay like, what I am I gonna do? Pick myself back up again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I find just our community, at least here in the Portland area, in the fashion side of things, is there's there is so much support. You know, there's always some that are not, but the majority of you know, the network here is so supportive and just wonderful. And the events that we've held through inside fashion design, it's been a lot of volunteers you know, Sloan volunteering, getting photographers to volunteer. And so it's just, yeah, it's really 
just asking and the worst they can say is no, but yeah, no, absolutely. I know in PDX fashion collaboration, someone was talking about starting a fashion show and I mentioned, you know, feel free to call me. We're not in direct competition. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can share something that'll make your life easier trying to produce a fashion show, or like you said, I know photographers, I know models, Mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. And it just helps build our community and everyone kind of has their, their niche. So it's, it's not, there's enough space for everyone to go around. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there any other, um, big call outs you want to mention? I know you have all these things are coming up. So maybe some of the dates we can go through again. Um, April show. April 27th through April 30th at Washington Square 2, which is across from Washington Square. We are between Red Robin and Ulta, or Good Landmarks. Okay. And then, sorry, to to attend the fashion show, is there a ticket purchase? It's sold out. It's sold out. It's sold out. Woohoo! Two days ago, we're hoping that we might be able to get a few more tickets, but we won't know till like April 25th. We have to actually go in and physically the measure the space okay, okay. And I well, very, what i believe oh, sorry um i was gonna say i believe sloan is gonna be there right yeah, yeah britta i thought yeah. you were gonna be my plus one so yeah i will i will be your plus one and we'll definitely do some i don't know ig live or photos mm-hmm. backstage whatever we'll we'll be there to absolutely share the excitement yeah mm-hmm. and i'm very picky about my seats because we are many of the people sitting in the audience are plus size individuals so we have like, you know, you go to events and the seats are right smack up. We yeah, have you're... space between each seat and enough knee room from one you're row to another. And mm-hmm. so that's why I'm hoping when we go in and actually physically measure and tape the floor that we can get some extra ticket sales that week. So if someone wants to attend yet, should they just check back on your website on April? Um, On social media. Okay. You'll post if there's some. Yes more tickets available. And then you have the, um, okay. So let me get this right. The consignment pop-up is the 27th through the 30th. Correct. Yes. And the, and the fashion show is the night Saturday, April 29th at 7 PM. Okay. All in the same Mm -hmm. location. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then you also have the, you are enough workshop day. Yes. Uh, Saturday, May 13th at the Tiger Grange. A register a pre-registration is required. Okay. We are asking for five dollars to hold their space. Okay. Wonderful. So you can find all of that on your social media. Social media. Website. Yeah. Okay. And then for your fall show, if someone wants to participate, the was the deadline in June? Um, we will be um social media blasting our casting call probably around mid-June for the fall show. Okay. So stay tuned for yes. all of that. If you I want mean, to get, we involved. really would love to have more plus size teens. We would love to have more plus size males. It's hard to recruit plus size males for some reason. Yeah. Do you um, work with any of the like uh, high schools or local colleges where you could um, kind of post? Um, uh, schools all, at or? least here are hard to get into. Okay. Um, I do a lot of, I put postcards around Panera bulletin board, Starbucks oh, okay. bulletin boards. I carry postcards and, and business cards in my purse because I actually leave them did, all over town. <laughs> I did actually get dedicated um, business cards for um, our recruiting of, of, it doesn't have a date, but it tells what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I got tired of going up to me, uh, strange men and saying, I'm legitimate. I'm <laughs> really not a stalker. Yeah, but would you like to model for me? <laughs> Yeah, that might be a little strange. And yeah. you are legitimate. We can, yes, we can, but we can you know, going up no printed material. Tell them, have you ever thought about modeling? Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we will support you along the way and we'll share through inside fashion design as well. Mm-hmm. And we will be at the show. So very much looking forward to that. And so wonderful to hear. Um, I, I'm so impressed that you, it's been going for many, many years, and I'm sure it took the first few several years just to get the cadence going. And a lot of businesses, Mm -hmm. you know, can fail within the first five years or so. And you've passed that. It's so funny because I posted a picture of my son just two days ago on my personal page 
and it was from like one of the first shows and it was like 11 30 midnight and he was seven maybe at that time and he sprawled out a, a get across two or three um folding chairs with the he just passed out <laughs> passed out and we couldn't go home because we literally had and back then we didn't have very many volunteers it was just myself my husband and my son and yeah you no know, he was crying saying I want to go home and we were like we can't because we have to get everything packed up but yeah we still have two hours of cleanup to do yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's the reality of it all well I Sloan did you have any other last minute thoughts questions I just wanted to say I really admire you Becky because you like don't stop you're just like you got this vision <laughs> and it's just awesome and you're touching all these people's lives and I know so many of your models and everybody has nothing but great things to say about your show and I just think that you are such like a important part of the you know fashion community here and we're just so lucky that you care and have such a big heart well thank you very admirable so I thank you also personally, very impressed and, and just admire what you've been doing so much. So thank you for your time. And it's been a pleasure to have you and we're thrilled to share your story and very inspirational. And we want to get the word out to help support Curvy Chic Closet and Foundation and everything that you do. So well, thank you, Britta. And I will see you two later this month. Yes. Looking Can't forward. Wait. <laughs> Bye. All right.